Probably slightly scary lighting this next to an alpaca sweater. Light! We have fire. <gasps> Seriously? Third time's charm, right? Stay lit. Light the candle. Oh, God, <laughs> that was rude. Yeah. All of that for ambiance. Was that worth it? I'm not quite sure. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. It, it may have been worth it. It looks pretty cute. I'm not gonna lie. Hello friends. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist and maker behind Dem and Rain. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I have got lots of things to share with you today. I'm very excited. I finished a bunch of things and then I have some life things to share with you. Uh, I probably put it in the title heading. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. Before we dive into it though, you can find all the links to all the places you can find me down below in the description box, along with you know the yarns and the patterns I talk about. Um, you can find my Instagram, Ravelry, website, my Ko-Fi, in case you wanna buy me a cup of tea because I don't drink coffee. Okay, <sighs> I've not done that much knitting. I feel like, yeah, I just, I've been really busy and then when I'm not busy, I just kind of like I don't want to do anything. I just want to stare at the TV <laughs> But yeah, I've 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 got I've got some stuff that I've actually finished So let me let, let's let's start showing you. Okay, so the first thing things I have I don't actually have with me um, because they're dirty or They've been used multiple times, so they don't look as cute as they were before, but I've made two dishcloths. I have used the Grandma's Dishcloth Pattern. It's a free one on Ravelry. Search Grandma's Dishcloth. You'll find it. I think there's actually a couple of different ones. They're free. It's great corner to corner type dishcloth pattern. So my dishwasher went out a couple of weeks ago. We got ordered a new one and it was going to be there until Saturday, we got it on Saturday, thankfully. But I had two weeks of hand washing dishes. Ah, yes. I hate hand washing dishes. I don't mind doing dishes. Like, I don't mind it so much. But the hand washing for two weeks for five people, we bought some paper plates for dinner, let me tell you. But I only have a few dishcloths. I've made lots of dishcloths, but typically for other people, and I only had a couple. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna need a few more than that because I'm not also then gonna do a ton of laundry to keep up with it. So I was able to whip up a couple of dishcloths. I made a blue one and then a gray one. I took a photo of the blue one that you would have seen on the screen. And yeah, those like take an hour each at most, at most. It was like something I would knit on while I was helping the kids with their homework. Just sitting on a dishcloth, that's it. So yeah, two dish dishcloths made. The next item I have finished, you have not seen. I cast this on Two days ago? Three days ago, because I finished it yesterday. I finished a baby hat. Okay, quit looking at the candle. I know the candle is super interesting, but let's look at the hat. I have finished a baby hat. Uh, we have, I, I know lots of people having babies right now, but there is a couple in our church who is having a baby shower this weekend. And yeah, I, mm, I love to knit people baby sweaters, but when I, wait too long, there's not enough time to knit a baby sweater. And I realized um, this last weekend that it was this weekend and I was like, shoot, I haven't bought anything for them yet. I haven't cast anything on. So I set everything aside. And in the last two evenings, I've made this. I probably could have knit it faster, but I knit it on DPNs. And I don't typically do DPNs for anything other than baby hats. So I find them a little bit fiddly, but for some reason I really like using them for hats rather than Magic Loop. I, do, I, I don't, don't know why, because I actually really prefer Magic Loop. But for some reason, whenever I do a baby hat, I immediately go for DPNs. So I just simple two by two rib hat. Like it should fit baby for quite a while. If unrolled, like this could probably fit six to nine, maybe even 12 months. I'm not really sure. I had my nephew here yesterday. I should have tried it on him. Um, and then fold it up like he folded up. He could fit, I did a newborn baby's head. So yeah, super versatile and it's gray. They're having a little boy. And I mean, gray goes with everything. So it's literally the perfect, the perfect color hat. My next finished project is 
my Hawken socks that I made for my father. So we have two. I'm gonna only show you one now because it's easier to just show one. So these are, wow, these are my Hawken socks. It is my pattern. It is like retro tube sock. Uh, my mom hates it when I say retro because you know she grew up in the 80s and I'm like, well, Guess what? Even the 90s is considered retro and vintage now, so that definitely means the 80s are. So, <laughs> anyways, so this is a worsted or DK weight sock. Um, I used Lion Brand Wool Ease. This is a colorway Fisherman. This is Umber, I think, maybe. I'm drawing a blank now. I'm pretty sure that one's Umber. And this is like the Hunter green. I think it's just called hunter green. I don't have the ball bands anymore. The lion brown ones, I usually just toss them right away. I don't keep, I don't keep them. Um, but yeah, I knit the third size, I think. Pretty sure. So yeah, not a whole lot more to say about this particular pair. I'm going to be, uh, putting out a call for testers probably tomorrow or so. I put the link down below to my form for the testers. Basically, I'm, you just need to use a worsted or a DK yarn, just check your gauge. Um, Cause I didn't check gauge on one of the pairs I've made and they're a little bit snug. Uh, I used the wrong needles. <laughs> Oops, I wasn't paying attention. Did I check my gauge? Absolutely not. So I will, wow, words. Bleh. Basically you need DK or worsted weight, just check your gauge and then you can use any type of yarn, whether it's the fancy indie dyed stuff or you have some commercial wool or if you just have some commercial acrylic, it doesn't matter. Just like you need to get gauge and knit at least one full sock by the end of the testing period. I will, I usually for, Socks, I give three weeks, which for a DK worst awake sock is like ages. <laughs> like I can knit one in usually two days. Like I could finish one in one day if that's like all I did was knit. But to be real, usually I can knit a pair in two days or a sock in two days, a pair in four days. So yeah, I will put the link down below. Just put fill in all the information. I will probably be like sending out an email in the next week for those who have been selected. And yeah, I'm excited about them. It's gonna be good. I like them. They're, they're, they make me happy. Hello everyone. Um, future me putting a pause on past me because past me forgot to mention what I am wearing. I mean, I'm not wearing it now. Now I'm wearing a sweatshirt, but in the video, past me is wearing the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knits. It is a beautiful cardigan. I love this cardigan. I knit it out of some alpaca yarn I found on a thrifting trip, so yes. Past me forgot to mention it. Future me is here to rectify that mistake. So, Champagne Cardigan, I'm wearing it. It is amazing. Uh, anyways, back to past me. I'll let, I'll let past me continue talking about all the things. Okay, now on to things I am working on. And we'll start with the most boring one first because We'll just leave you hanging for all the good things. So the first thing I have to show you, I'm just gonna show it to you folded up because it's too hard to hold up the whole thing. I am working on my crochet blanket. I put a decent amount of progress on. I've basically doubled what I had the last time I showed you. On here I have my little hand-painted sunflower progress keeper, which by the way, I still have some in my shop. Uh, link in my bio. Um, so I still have some of those sets left. Um, so I'm curious. So I think it's called trip, tripophobia or tri tripophobia. I don't know. The fear or like the phobia around holes. My sis, so she doesn't like, hasn't like actually have this thing, but she was saying that this texture, the waffle texture of this blanket freaks her out. Does it freak anybody else out? I don't, it doesn't freak me out at all. I look at it and think, ooh, squishy. <laughs> but she's like, I don't know why, but that makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. And I was like, okay, it's okay. 
<laughs> so I'm curious, is there anybody else out there who has that like phobia of holes? Does this make you uncomfortable? Or just like if you don't have that, does it make you uncomfortable? Or do you think, ooh, squishy? Makes me think, ooh, squishy. Um, so yeah, I'm just knitting this out of some acrylic yarn that I got for free. And yeah, that's all I really have to say about it. Just a big waffle blanket that's gonna be fabulous and squishy. Not creepy, squishy. I didn't mention it is a worsted weight yarn and I am crocheting that on a five millimeter. No, an eight millimeter, sorry, I couldn't read it. Just a cheap bow plastic hook. I wanna get an ergonomic hook because it does hurt my hand after a little while crocheting, which I mean, my hands always hurt after I crochet for some reason. And then it's living in my hand, di hand dyed, my handmade bag. Crochet blanket, very slowly making progress on it. The next thing I'm working on is Claire's Christmas sweater. It is living in my prickly owl bag, which I love. I mean, I always tell you I love it, but it's true. I love it. So this is going to be my daughter's Christmas gift. I said that really weird, but I'm kind of feeling a little weird today. So the pattern I'm using or pattern I'm using is the Tin Can Knits Flax Sweater, the math for it. And then I've added color work to it. Just like every other stitch I'm doing color work. So yeah, it's using Lion Brand Wool Ease is the natural heather color. And then the colorful bits, the color work parts is Lion Brand Mandala in the tranquil color, I think. I mentioned it in the last video, so go check that out, I have it. Um, yeah, so I have finished the yoke, I have split for the sleeves, I am now working on the body. I have probably three, three more inches go. She's got a really long torso, so I need to pull out one of her t-shirts and just like check the length of it. Cause that is the thing about making it as a Christmas gift. I can't try it on her. So I'm gonna check the length of it and I think I'm gonna do a split hem for this. So yeah, I'm not 100% decided. And then the sleeves will have this and then down at the end of the sleeves, I will have more of this. I don't have the ball in here. Actually, I don't know why, but there's a different purple or a different pink and then a purple that will be at the ends of the sleeves. So yeah, I can't wait to block this though. There's a few stitches that I'm a little, I wanna walk on. So I'm hoping some blocking fixes that. And then on here from Simply Serving HK, it's a little rainy day gnome. He's got little raindrops on his hat. How friggin' cute is he? I love him so much. I've wanted this one for a while, the first time, I saw it on her website. I was like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. I also have the sticker actually. I have the sticker version from her shop. Like how cute. So I've really wanted the Progress Keeper for a long time and then finally I ordered it. I ordered it, I couldn't help it. It had, it had to finally be mine. So I cannot be happier. It's one I feel like I'm gonna reach for a lot. So yeah, there's my daughter's sweater. I'm hoping to, you know, have that done in like a week or two. It kind of just depends on everything else in life because life is busy. So the next project is my mushroom sweater. It is living in another prickly owl bag. It's funny, I've got several of them going right now. This is my butterfly bag from Prickly Owl. And in here is my mushroom sweater, which I was hoping to have done by now. I'm almost done but I didn't quite get it finished. So, here she is. It's so hard to see it, it's so squished up. So, this is a pattern I'm just kind of rolling with. It is a one, it is not one by one, it is a broken rib pattern with a really pretty wide stockinette raglan increase. And then that stockinette, sorry, flows down the side of the body and also the sleeves. So 
I have finished both sleeves and I have about one more or two more. I think I have two more inches of body to do and then I'm going to do a folded hem at the bottom of the sweater because I really like the folded hem on the neck and the sleeves and I'm kind of thinking I want it on the base of the sweater as well because I feel like it'll just make it even more sweatshirty which is kind of what I'm aiming for and let me tell you with this sweater more than any well my other my Untuva sweater I really looked forward to the blocking stage but I am so excited for blocking this thing because it's broken rib it's very bunched up right now like it needs to be out like this more so it's supposed to be like oversized but right now I don't have a whole lot of positive ease when I've tried it on so I'm really looking forward to this having more positive ease especially in the sleeves the sleeves have almost like no positive ease it's ease it's like half an inch maybe I want more <laughs> I want a lot more positive ease and there's like yeah I kind of I do wish I think I had done one more increase round on the yoke just for the sleeve um, area I didn't but We'll see when I block. That's the other thing is like, I'm just like, I'm really heavily relying on the blocking. Like, cause my math should work out um, if we do it off of that. So I don't know. And then when I block it, I'm going to try to not stretch out my collar too much. Remember, I don't, if you've watched when I first cast this on, I had mentioned how people were like, when I first tried it on and shared it, people were like, ah, oh, it seems really tight around the neck. It wasn't, it's was pretty loose, but now of course that I've knit the body and the sleeves, it's stretching out more. So I don't want it to stretch out any more than it is. So when I block it, I'm going to pin around the neck hole to keep the neck hole where it's at and then spread everything else out. Hopefully that works, I don't know. So yeah, the yarn, the yarn I'm using is Coast to Coast Yarn Companies. Um, just her sock base, it's a 7525 in the shiitake colorway, and I'm holding that double with Hobie's Alpaca Blaze in the nougat color. So, and then let me show you all the markers I have on here. I've got so many good ones. So this one, this cute little pumpkin one, it's the only non-mushroom one on here. It is from Hello Gavriella who I just love. She does so many beautiful things. She does resin and she does polymer clay. She has, I don't know if it's currently live or not, but she does like workshops on how to write patterns. She's just a beautiful person. I love her so much. So go check her out if you don't already follow her. And then I have, let's see, not these aren't stitch markers, but I have some of my needle stoppers I had in a previous restock. Then we have on here a couple of different mushroom, whoa, sorry. Then on here I have a couple of different mushroom progress keepers. This top one, the red one, is from Latch and Lou. And then this bottom one is the one that I'm playing around with. So it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to because my resin didn't set properly, so I'm having an issue with it. And then my stitch marker I have on here is from Craft Me Not Super Cute Polymer Clay Mushrooms. I love them so much. So pretty. So yeah, there is my mushroom sweater. I'm very pleased with it so far. I can't wait to block it. I think it's gonna do wonders for this. Like, gonna be good okay the last thing I am working on is something I just cast on this morning what I'm currently working on is a DK pair of socks but for the rim cuff words they they're they're not working for me today for the cuff I am doing patents croy socks sock yarn so I am making DK socks this is not a DK yarn. This is technically what they have called a fingering. It is also not a fingering. 
I would call this more a sport weight, especially based off the yardage. It is um, 166 yards per 50 grams. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's not a fingering weight. And I don't know what gauge they have. You can never read these ball bands. I don't know what the gauge is. So anyways, this is more of a sport weight. I was going to hold it double, like his fingering weight held double, should like match up to DK perfectly. I've knit socks that way before. However, it's a little bit too thick because it's actually sport weight. And holding it double was creating more of a worsted weight. And I'm fine with that if that was the body of the sock, but because it's for the cuff and the rest of it was gonna be DK, I didn't want a thicker cuff because then I had the potential of it flopping or doing weird things. So I decided to cast on with the sport weight for the cuff. And then for the rest of the sock, I am using Paisley Knits Earl Grey. And this is her DK yarn. I'm pretty sure this one is a 2575. I don't have the ball band. I wound it up and set the ball band somewhere. No idea where I put it, couldn't find it. So yeah, it's a beautiful like brown with grays and white. It's such a beautiful variegated neutral. So these two together are gonna make a super cute sock. I will show you what I have done so far. Go with my microphone. Okay, can you just please like hang out for a second? Thank you. Yarn is trying to take off on me. I got this, I got this, ta-da. This is what I have done so far this morning. So I, I like a good simple sock, but I can never just do a simple sock. So the back side of it has a faux cable running down the middle. I love a vanilla sock with a twist. Huh? It's a twist, you know, get it? Oh, uh, crack myself up. Not really, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed of myself at the moment. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so I have knit this much. As you can see, the sport weight and this are playing very nicely together. Some people would be like, why would you do that? But I mean, it looks really nice. I went down one needle size for this. For the cuff, I did a three millimeter and then the rest of the sock I'm knitting in a 3.25, which is usually what I knit my socks out of. Um, reasons I had issues with my Hawkins socks. I knit one pair in a three millimeter they're too snug. And then I accidentally knit the other pair I made on three and a half millimeter needles. So those ones are a little bit loose. My other ones are too tight. You know, the just rights, it's the 3.25s. You wouldn't think a quarter of a millimeter would make that big of a difference, but oh my goodness, it does. So yeah, that's basically it. I'm knitting a DK sock. There is no pattern. I'm making it up. I might write it up. I don't know. I feel like there's probably a pattern out there like this. I don't know. Let me know, what do you think? I really like how it goes up into the cuff too, the twisted rib. I have a feeling these are gonna fly though because I really like the, the neutral variegated and I don't have any like this. So yeah, and I'm determined to make these ones fit my feet because I have a few that I've made recently that I've, I've knit too short for the foot part and they're just like, the heel slips down a little too much and I have some other ones that fit perfectly and I just, I prefer wearing them, so I need to make sure that I knit the foot long enough and not try to cut corners to just be done. I just need to do it and yeah, not be impatient. Okay, that is it for knitting. I now have a couple plants to share with you. Okay, so both the plants I'm gonna share with you today are Dracaena. The first one I have is, I don't know what variety. It's just a really skinny leaf Dracaena. Wow, it doesn't really wanna focus on it. It's like, woo. Crazy. So this is actually a piece that was broken off of my big tree that's taller than me um, by my kids. They broke off this cute little branch that was growing. And so I took that branch and I stuck it in the jar and I don't know if you can see, super glary. Oh, I probably can't see super well. I'm sure you can see the outlines. There's tons of roots in here. I could transplant it and put it in dirt but I kind of like it in the jar. It's super cute. It lives in the corner of one of my counters and I really like it there. It just, it makes me smile. I like having a little bit of green on my counter. They can live in a dark spot and it seems to like the water. So it's just gonna live in there until it starts to get mad at me and then I'll put it in dirt. But I think it's love and life just fine in the, in the amber jar. This is my next Dracaena. It is Dracaena white something. I wanna say white bird. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. 
there's so many like plant names that have white something. So, but I really like this one. I have two different plants that are in this pot. It is one that my sister gave me. She, in 2020, got this one. We were doing farmer's markets and she was selling plants. Well, she took these guys to all the different markets and they just weren't selling. I don't know how they're so beautiful and like eye-catching, but they didn't sell and they didn't like traveling. They are a plant that likes to be put in a spot and left there. And so they were like turning brown and of course they don't like a lot of like direct sunlight. So they were crisping up because sometimes the booth fills with light and there's not a lot you can do about it. So yeah, they weren't happy. They weren't loving life. So she's like, do you want them? If not, I'm just going to toss them. So I was like, I'll take them. I'll nurse them back. And I've now they've getting all sorts of beautiful growth. And I'm, as it gets taller, I'm just pulling leaves off the bottom because in my mind, I'm imagining a really pretty tall tree. It's gonna take a while to get there. It's gonna be a minute. But when, when it gets there, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. I did forget to mention, I forgot to mention, I can't believe I forgot to mention this. So, other knitting thing. Remember my Soho top that I knit? Um, I pattern tested the Soho top for Kadri. Beautiful pattern. Love it, it fits so good. But, but, the yarn. The yarn is fabulous. It is from Bella Filato Studios. It's so soft and dreamy and beautiful. I love the color. However, however, the color of the yarn like matches my skin tone and there is no contrast and it makes me feel a little washed out and a little like, I mean, not naked, but like if you looked at me from afar, you might think she got a shirt on. It matches like, that good. So I'm really sad about it, but I think I'm going to over dye it. I really, I don't know. I still have some of the yarn left, like almost a whole skein that I think I'm going to knit some socks out over something, but just nothing that's going to be on my body, like upper half reflecting off of my face. So I'm going to be over dyeing it, maybe a burgundy or a black. So yeah. Once I do that, I will share with you and kind of show you before and after, but yeah, that's on my radar because I kind of want to wear it as a transition piece between fall and winter, but as it is, I'm just not wearing it because of the color. So yeah, it's gonna happen and it makes me a little sad, but I'd rather over dye it and be sad about losing that color than just like keeping it that color and never wearing it, so gonna happen. I'm gonna over dye it. I'm just not sure which color yet. I might start with the burgundy and then if I don't like the burgundy, I'll over dye it black. So yeah, let's get into some of the other things. <sighs> yeah, so Monday, two days ago, I ran into a deer. It was like just at that dusk period where the deer, you know, come out and do their thing and was driving in, in my car, which is a pretty decent sized car. It's uh, like a Dodge Durango, so pretty good size. And she hopped out right in front of me and I was just able to scooch my foot over to the brake and just start to hit the brake when I slammed into her. Oh, guys, it sucks so much. I hate like that I hit her. Like it hurt me inside because I was like, I just can't, I, like there's no way this animal is going to survive this. So I was able to pull over into a driveway, threw my hazards on, I locked my car, left my kids, I'm like, stay here. And I like ran down the street a little ways to where I had hit her um, and she had fallen in the ditch. She wasn't doing so good. So I called my dad, I was like, what do I do? <laughs> because I've never hit a deer. It has been a huge fear of mine because we do have a lot of deer in our like area. There's the amount of times I've had deer jump out in front of me is crazy or I like see them crossing or they're near the road. Like there's so many deer. So it's been a fear of mine like, and I've kind of always known in the back of my head at some point in my lifetime of driving, I'm gonna hit a deer. Well, it's happened, which makes me scared because I'm like still fairly young in my driving and I'm just like, you know, I'll probably hit another one. <laughs> Like just the odds of it, like, I don't know, because the amount I see them. Anyways, going off track. So he told me to call it in. So I called 911 and the dispatcher told me, well, the police officers don't usually do anything about it. I'm like, okay, well, what do I do? And she's like, Can't call Fish and Wildlife. But of course, Fish and Wildlife is closed already. Um, 
they gave the number to the deputy and he gave me a call and was like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, I'm fine, I'm just shooken up. And my car took a little damage, but, so he's like, where's the deer? So I told him where the deer was and he said he was gonna take care of it. So I really hope, I'm pretty sure he would have put the poor thing out of its misery because I felt really bad that she was still there and it, she wasn't quite gone. Anyways, yeah, I'm really sad about it. And then my car, my car. Thankfully it wasn't too bad because it wasn't going too fast. It was like a 35 mile an hour zone. So it wasn't like I was flying at highway speeds. If that had happened, it could have rolled up onto my windshield and stuff. And thankfully, and it hit it too hard. So I shattered my grill, bent my bumper into my tire and ruined my radiator. So my dad took my car. My dad is a mechanic and a tow truck driver. Thank goodness he came, took a look at it. The bumper was fine. We just bent it off the wheel, but the radiator was leaking fluid. So, so he took that, fixed it for me. I need to go pick it up still. Probably do that tomorrow because I'm currently vehicleist. So yeah, dear. Thankfully, my vehicle is large enough. My kids didn't see me hit her. They didn't even realize really what had happened. Thankfully, I didn't hit her too hard either. So like the kids were totally fine. Nobody really got hurt. I had a little bit of back pain, but I think it's because I tensed up so much. But yeah, they were like, a deer, we hit a deer. And I'm like, <laughs> so thankfully they didn't see it and they didn't seem to be traumatized by it. I was traumatized, but didn't the face them a tiny bit, which I feel like I should question a little, but. I'm glad they're not traumatized. I'm glad that it didn't affect them like it did me. But yeah, I hit a deer. Besides that fun thing, I've been, let's see, what have I been doing? Oh, I've been dealing with resin issues. I had all sorts of problems with my resin from it being bendy to it like getting this weird haze and it just wasn't turning out. Like every batch of stuff I was pouring, it just, I would, paint something, pour resin over it, it would get hazy. I would pour a, like, like a plain, plain button and it would bend and snap and it was just so frustrating. I couldn't figure it out. So I did a control test with uh, the old res, the resin I've been using and then new resin and the control this morning it turned out that it's just the old resin. There's something, there's something, something wrong with it. So we're just gonna toss it, which makes me a little sad because it's, pretty new and bigger bottles, so I'm kind of irritated. But I mean, whatever. I don't know if it just wasn't stored properly in my house or there, or if it just happens to be that batch. So I'm just like taking extra care with this new resin that I purchased to make sure it's not, it's being stored properly. And yeah, so that's been fun. Um, I've been listening to some audiobooks. Thank you for those of you on Instagram and here who made recommendations. I finished, I finished my first one, which is crazy because I just don't finish books. So listening to them, I'm actually finishing them, which is fabulous. I really wish I could physically read the books because I really prefer that over listening. And I feel like I can't really say I've read the books because I didn't read it. I listened to it. So. It's my own mental block. I just can't call it reading a book, but I did listen to my first book. I finished the Norse mythology book. I'm drawing a blank on the author's name. I will put it down below, but it was good. I did skip a couple of the story, stories, the chapters or whatever they were called. They seemed more like short stories than one long continuous story. They all like kind of linked and referred back to one another, but I was, there was a couple I was like I'm bored. So I just skipped through them. But the author is the one who read the book. He um, had a really good voice and it was engaging. I enjoyed the stories. I really like mythology. So I found that really interesting. I'll probably listen to some other mythology ones. I think that same author has some other ones that he has done. So I might look into those later, but I have other ones I'm listening to first. Um, I am currently listening to Lauren's Grant, Lauren Graham's Talking As Fast As I Can. I love Lauren Graham. Love her in Gilmore Girls, also watch her in Parenthood. She's, and then, I mean, there's some other things she's been in. Every time she pops onto the screen, it's like, oh, Lauren's in this, I love her. 
she makes me happy, she makes me smile, and listening to her read this book is the best. If you like Lauren Graham, do yourself a favor, listen to this book, like, it makes me so happy. Like, even if you don't like audiobooks, like, you're like, but you like Lauren Graham, you'll thoroughly enjoy this. It's so good. So yeah, I'm about an hour into that one and yeah, I was sad when I had to stop listening to it. So probably listen to that again today as I'm doing some resin work. We've also been watching The Rings of Power. I'm curious, have you watched it? Are you a Lord of the Rings fan? How, what are your, just all of it. I want to know. So we're like original Lord of the Rings like fans. My husband's read all the books. He's read the Cimmerillion, I think is what it's called. I'm pretty sure. I plan, I've read The Hobbit and three quarters of the, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. I just, I set it down and then I just haven't had time to pick it back up. I do plan on listening to the books. Um, everybody has recommended the ones that Andy Serkis reads. I love Andy Serkis, so I, I mean, everybody's recommended those ones, so I'm sure it's going to be good. So I plan on listening to the whole trilogy. But yeah, so we're big fans. We love the original trilogy. Not a huge fan of The Hobbit so much, but this new Rings of Power, I both love it. I do have a couple of issues with it. Not the issues you probably think, but I do have a couple of issues with it. Let me tell you, the cinematography is amazing. It is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I can't peel my eyes away from the screen. Usually I like kind of like watch, look at my phone or like look at my knitting while we're watching stuff. No, this show, I am glued. It is stunning. Now, all of the actors are amazing. Uh, the issues I have are a couple. The first one is I've gotten over the guy who plays um, ah, Elrond, the guy who plays Elrond. He's an amazing actor, but I can't get over his face. He just doesn't look like Hugo Weaving, I, what's, who's he, whoever the actor is that plays Elrond in the trilogy. So he doesn't look like him and I just kind of have to like cover his face sometimes. Like the first like episode I was like, I can't, he doesn't look anything like him. But he does have some of the mannerisms and he does act like him. So I just have to get over the fact that he doesn't look like him. It's fine though. He's amazing and it's really good. The other issue I have is with the elves. Now, I know you're going to be like, oh, get over the fact that there's a black elf. I don't care. That I love that it's a diverse cast. I think it's amazing. The original one didn't have that. This one does. I know that some people are like elves shouldn't, they should always, they're white with blonde hair, blue eyes, whatever. I don't have a, I don't have any issue if, that there are people of color. I think that's great. I have an issue with the fact that the elves, where's the long hair? Guys, where's the long hair? Like, I don't, I'm terrible at character names. Like the only names of the characters I know is Elrond and uh, Galadriel. Those are the only two that I know. The rest of them, I can't, I, I struggle with names. So um, the black elf, though, I don't remember his name. Like I said, where, like how epic would it be to have like this flowing long black hair? Like, oh, with the braids and it just it needs that. And there's so many elves with short hair and medium length hair. And I'm just like, what the crap? <sighs> give, give us that like ethereal look like, <sighs> That's the only issue I have. My husband has an issue that um, the dwarf guy, don't can't remember his name, his wife, he's, he's bummed that she doesn't have a beard. She does have some fuzz on the sides of her face, but she doesn't have a full on beard. And he's like, the dwarf females are supposed to have beards. And I'm like, dude, it's fine. He's like, no, she needs to have a beard. And I'm like, yeah, but would you really want to look at her if she had a beard? He's like, yes, she needs to have a beard. So, but oh my gosh, I love her the actress who plays her, whatever her name is. It makes me so sad that I don't know all the names. <laughs> but yeah, we love the Rings of Power. We, every Friday night, we're like, we lead a youth group and every night, like, get out of our house now so we can go watch the Rings of Power. It's so good. We love it so much. Those are my only gripes, so the elves don't have long hair. I really wish I had long hair. Just make it happen, people. Make it happen. It is future me again. I thought of another gripe. I remembered it's this chick's dress. 
Dude, it looks more like a Star Wars costume than it does a Lord of the Rings costume. Okay, I'm done. I love the Harfoots. They're so freaking cute, but I love hobbits. So it's a no wonder I like the Harfoots. So yeah, anyways, Rings of Power, we like it. I wanna know all of your thoughts and opinions. Put them down below. Do you watch it? Do you like Lord of the Rings? Do you have any complaints or are you just madly in love with it? I'm madly in love with it. Minus the elf's hair. There's a little more hair. And that chick's dress. And anyhow, I think that's it. I've rambled for quite a while. Uh, I felt a little chatty. Uh, so um, if you made it through here, you're amazing. Thanks for watching. Also, before I go, Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter because I will be having a restock coming up. I am not really sure. I was thinking doing the 14th, but because of all the resin issues I've been dealing with, I'm not sure I'm gonna have things ready in time. So subscribe to my newsletter because also I always send out a discount code for every website update. So make, make, make sure you do that so you get that extra discount. And then I will for sure probably be doing one October 29th, which is gonna have some amazing things along with a collaboration with Pennington Design. She's going to have some pottery, mushroom pottery. So go, go follow her, make sure you check out her amazing stuff that will be in that restock as well. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching and following along. If you haven't, please hit that like and subscribe. Um, leave comments below with what you've been working on. I love reading your guys' comments. Every time I get a comment, I like go through the app on my phone. I'm like, oh, another comment. I love reading them. They make me so happy. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye.